Hi everyone, Mary here, and we are going to start uh, doing some Chapter 4 homework problems. So we're going to start with number 1. Here goes. A small child is sitting on a sleigh. What force must be applied to accelerate the child and the sled, or the sleigh, at a rate of 1.25 meters per second squared if the combined mass of the child and the sled is 60 kilograms? So as always, we write down what we know. So the mass is 60 kilograms. The rate of acceleration is 1.25 meters per second squared. And we want to know what force must be applied. So the force that must be applied to make this mass accelerate, well, what equation do we have? Well, that's going to be our old friend, Newton's second law, F equals ma. So force is going to be the mass of 60 kilograms times the rate of acceleration of 1.25 meters per second squared. And when I pick up my calculator and multiply those two things together, I get 75 kilogram meters per second squared. And a kilogram meter per second squared is 1 Newton. So my answer is 75.0, keeping it to three significant figures, Newtons. And that is the answer to that one. Next problem. A net force of 265 newtons accelerates a bike and a rider together. The rate of acceleration is 2.3 meters per second squared. What is the combined mass of the bike and the rider? So here goes. We have a net force. The force causing the acceleration is 265 newtons. The rate of acceleration that is caused is 2.30 meters per second squared. And we want to know what is the combined mass. Well, F, M, and A leads us to Newton's second law. F equals M, A. I want to solve for M, so I have to do a little algebra here. To get M alone, I'm going to divide both sides by A, do something on one side of an equation. That means you can do it on the other side. So mass is going to be equal to force divided by rate of acceleration. I'm now going to put my values in. Mass is going to be 265 newtons divided by 2.30 meters per second squared. And when I pick up my calculator, I'm going to go 265 divided by 2.30. I end up with 115, if I keep it to three sig figs, newtons per meters per second squared. Now it's mass, so it should be kilograms. But where do those newtons, excuse me, where do those units come from? Let's take a look at that. I'm going to have newtons divided by meters per second squared. Well, a newton is equivalent to a kilogram meter per second squared divided by a meter per second. So that means invert and multiply by second squared over meters. So meters will cancel meters. Second squared will cancel second squared. I'll end up with kilograms. I do end up with kilograms, which is my mass unit. And the units are my check that I did my algebra correctly. So onward we go. Life is good. Number three. A boat has a mass of 6,800 kilograms. Its engines generate a drive force of 4,100 newtons due west, while the boat wind, excuse me, exerts a force of 800 newtons due east, and the water exerts a resistive force of 1,200 newtons due east. What is the magnitude and the direction of the boat's acceleration? Holy moly, we got all sorts of things going on. So let's draw ourselves a little picture. I've got a little boat. Here's my little boat. I'll put a little sail on it. And as convention on a piece of paper, we're going to have north at the top, south here, east to the right, and west to the left. So let's draw what we know. Um, the engine exerts a drive force of 4,100 newtons west. So west is in this direction. So I'm going to have 4,100 newtons to the west. While the wind exerts a force of 800 newtons east, so I'm going to have another vector, 800 newtons to the east. And the water exerts a resistive force of 1,200 newtons east. So it is friction 
always opposes motion. So the boat's moving to the west. It's a resistive force of 1200 east. So we're also going to have another resistive or friction vector going east of 1200 newtons. I want to know what is the magnitude and the direction of the boat's acceleration. So acceleration is my question. The mass of my boat is 6800 newtons. Now, Newton, I said Newtons, I meant kilograms. See that little kilograms? Should be kilograms. Newton's second law says this, it is the net or the unbalanced force that is going to make the mass accelerate. So which one of these forces do I put into this equation? Well, none of them. I have to make the net force. Net force is the unbalanced or the sum of the forces. So what have I got? I've got 4100 in this direction. I've got 800 and 1200 in this direction. So 4100 west minus 1200 plus 800 is 2000 east. I'm going to have a net force that is 2100 newtons to the west. So that is what my net force is going to be and my net force is going to make my mass accelerate, I am looking for my rate of acceleration. How do I find acceleration or get that alone? Well, I'm going to have to divide both sides by mass to get rid of it on this side of the equation. Mass divides out with mass. Acceleration is going to be equal to net force divided by mass, and all I'm doing is rewriting this up here, and my rate of acceleration will be my net force, my 2100 newtons, divided by the mass of my boat, 6800 kilograms. I now pick up my calculator, so 2100 newtons divided by 6800 kilograms, and I got an answer into say three sig figs of 0 0.309. Now it's an acceleration, so what units should be on it? Meters per second squared. That's the answer I should get. Where do those units come from? Let's take a minute and take a look. I have newtons divided by kilograms. Newtons divided by kilograms. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. Divide by kilogram means invert and multiply by kilograms. So that's going to mean kilograms cancel kilograms. I'm going to end up with meters per second squared. I do end up with meters per second squared, and life is good. Let's do one more. Next problem. The air exerts a forward force of 10 newtons on the propeller of a 0 .200 kilogram model plane. If the plane accelerates forward at 2 meters per second squared, what is the magnitude of the resistive force exerted by the air on the plane? So as always, let's draw a little picture because it's a lot easier picking out what's going on when we have a picture. So here is my little airplane. Let's put a little propeller on it. Let's put some wings on it too because I like wings on my planes. Okay, um, the air exerts a forward force of 10 newtons on the propeller of a plane. So we have a forward force of 10 newtons. The mass of the plane is 0 0.20000 kilograms. I got too many zeros in my voice there. Um, the plane accelerates at a rate of 2 meters per second squared, and we want to know what is the resistive force exerted on the airplane. Basically, we want to know what is the air resistance or the drag on this. So there is some sort of a resistive or backwards force. We want to know about this resistive or drag force that is going to be backwards. That's what we don't know. So how are we going to go about doing this one? Well, what do we know? We know F equals MA, and we do know it is the net force that is what is going to make the mass accelerate. Well, the airplane is going to accelerate in the direction of motion, which is going to be forward. The resistive force is going to oppose that motion. So my net force is going to be equivalent to my 10 newtons minus my resistive force, whatever the heck it is. 
So my 10 newtons forward minus my resistance force is going to be equal to the mass of my airplane times its acceleration. And I know my mass, I know my acceleration. The only thing I don't know is that resistive force. So let's put my numbers in, see what happens. 10 newtons minus my resistive force is going to be equal to my mass, 0 0.200 kilograms, times my rate of acceleration, 2 meters per second squared. OK, 10 newtons minus my resistive force 0.2 times 2. Well, let's double check, make sure my brain doesn't give me something silly. And I ended up with 0 0.4 kilograms times meters per second squared are newtons. Now what I have to do is I have to do nothing but add and subtract. I've got to get this alone. How am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to add resistive force to both sides plus resistive force. And to get rid of this or get it on the other side, I am going to subtract 0.4 newtons to this side and subtract 0.4 newtons from that side. That's going to cancel. That's going to cancel. And I'm going to end up with my resistive force, which is the only thing on this side, is going to be 10 minus 0.4 or 9.60, if I stay to three significant figures, 9.6 zero newtons, and that is going to be the force that is acting on my airplane. All right, that will do for the first four problems, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.